What do you do when both choices feel like a mistake? When logic runs in circles and emotion splits you in two? You're not weak. You're not indecisive. You're human. Every day, we make choices with no clear answers between safety and risk, comfort and growth, self and others. And no spreadsheet can solve that tension. Because this isn't just about weighing pros and cons. It's a collision of brain chemistry, evolutionary shortcuts, moral frameworks, and the sheer uncertainty of the future. In this episode, we explore the hidden architecture of choice. Why your brain stalls when stakes feel high. What neuroscience reveals about regret, risk, and doubt. How artificial intelligence is reshaping decision systems. And how philosophers, generals, and scientists built frameworks to help us act when the path forward feels impossible. This isn't about perfect choices. It's about understanding the forces behind them. This is the science of making impossible decisions. Part 1. Why We Freeze Cognitive Load Decision Fatigue Bounded Rationality You're juggling job offers. Five, maybe six. One pays more. Another lets you travel. One feels safe. Another sounds like a dream. You weigh. You doubt. You scroll. And you freeze. This isn't weakness. This is cognitive overload. Psychologist George A. Miller identified the magic number. Seven plus minus two, the limit of what we can hold in working memory. Exceed that, and our brain short circuits. Barry Schwartz, author of The Paradox of Choice, showed that more options don't empower us, they paralyze us. Each new option introduces opportunity cost and imagined regret. And Nobel laureate Herbert Simon offered a more forgiving view. We don't optimize, we satisfy, settling on what's good enough. Because we're bounded by time, knowledge, and processing ability. Part 2. The Neuroscience of Uncertainty Now zoom inside the brain. Two forces compete. The amygdala, which processes fear and threat, and the prefrontal cortex, which handles planning and logic. When uncertainty spikes, the amygdala floods us with cortisol, a stress hormone that clouds judgment and magnifies risk. Antonio Damasio's somatic marker hypothesis suggests that emotion isn't separate from reason, it guides it. Every decision carries a bodily weight. That knot in your stomach, that's data. Yet when fear dominates, the prefrontal cortex is suppressed. Rationality dims. We become reactive. This biological war makes tough decisions not just hard, but viscerally painful. Part 3. Game Theory and Decision Matrices Now picture life as a game. Every choice affects others. Every outcome has a cost. Enter game theory pioneered by John von Neumann and John Nash. The Nash equilibrium shows us how individuals choose strategies when they depend on others' decisions. Payoff matrices help visualize outcomes. They aren't crystal balls, but they force clarity. What does each action cost? What does it risk? What does it offer? For instance, two competing startups might both benefit by not undercutting prices. But without trust, they spiral into mutual losses. This mirrors real life. Most decisions aren't solo. They're entangled. Part 
before. Moral algorithms and AI decision systems. Self-driving cars face a problem philosophers have wrestled with for centuries. The trolley dilemma. Should the car swerve to save five pedestrians, but kill its passenger? MIT's Moral Machine collected millions of responses globally. Cultures varied. Some favored youth over age, humans over pets, law abiders over jaywalkers. AI doesn't decide. It follows algorithms. But those algorithms reflect us. And when machines make life or death decisions, we must encode values. Here, ethics becomes code. Part 5. Philosophical Models of Decision Making Jeremy Bentham argued that the best action is the one that maximizes happiness. That's utilitarianism. Immanuel Kant disagreed. He believed in deontology that some actions are right or wrong, regardless of outcomes. Then came Sartre and the existentialists, who said, there is no blueprint. You choose who you become, and in choosing, you define your values. Each model has flaws. Utilitarianism can justify harm. Deontology can be rigid. Existentialism can lead to paralysis. But all offer lenses through which to see decisions not just as logic trees, but as moral statements. Part 6. Practical Frameworks for Real Life Let's get tactical. Colonel John Boyd developed the OODA loop. Observe, orient, decide, act. It's used by fighter pilots, CEOs, and strategists. The goal? Speed of clarity. Make fast feedback loops. Jeff Bezos uses the regret minimization framework. Imagine you're 80. Look back. Which choice would you regret not taking? And finally, second order thinking. Don't just ask, what happens if I do this? Ask, what happens because I did this? Chase consequences, not dopamine. You don't need to be certain. You need to understand the system you're navigating. Decisions aren't just about right or wrong. They're about alignment. With your values, with the data, with your future self. And maybe the real power isn't in choosing the best option. It's in becoming the kind of person who can handle what comes next. So stop asking, what if I mess up? Start asking, what will I learn if I move? And then take the step. <laughs>